again for the position of crossing the northern Suez, uh, the Gulf of Suez, again, there are none of these features. It is certainly not at the mouth of the channel, and there is nothing that would uh, be referred to as the God of the unknown, which would be on the other side. There's another place that uh, is being proposed at a place called Nuiba, and we'll examine that in a little detail. It was proposed by a, an explorer named Ron Wyatt, who did some extensive work in this area and has pr proposed Nuiba as a possible place for the crossing of the children of Israel into the land of Midian. And then there are those who believe that the crossing could take place at the Straits of Tehran, at the very opening of this uh, gulf into the main body of the Red Sea. So having dismissed the first two uh, suggestions, the Reed Sea or the North Suez, let's take a look now at two of the solutions that take us across the Gulf of Aqaba, remembering that this is a gulf that is some 2,000 feet deep and at places as much as 4,600 feet deep. Now at Nuiba, there's a very interesting uh, uh, outcropping a beach that exists that sort of juts out of this area. And the idea is that the children of Israel, as they were traveling across the north, when they came to the land of the Philistines, suddenly turned south and began to travel south, and they found themselves what would effectively be a box canyon. They would exit from the mountains themselves onto this huge sandy beach area and there would be nowhere to go. There's also another very interesting facet about this particular place that as you examine this location, it just so happens that below the surface at this portion of the Gulf of Aqaba, there is an underwater land bridge. It resides uh, under the water, about 200 feet below the water. There's a gentle slope that leaves the western bank and then uh, goes along and comes up as though it was a highway put under the sea. It was Ron Wyatt who, on the Nuiba side, noticed there was this peculiar pillar that was there with no inscription. And according to his own reports, when he traveled to the Saudi Arabian side, that he found a, another pillar, only this one had inscribed on it the place of the crossing. When he was arrested, for he was there in Saudi Arabia, he sort of uh, snuck in through Jordan. They thought he was an Israeli spy. When he finally convinced them he wasn't a spy, that he was a, a biblical archaeologist, to prove his point, he took Saudi Arabian scholars out to this place and apparently, according to his own writing, um, showed them this pillar and the Saudi Arabians immediately took it down for safekeeping. Now, no pictures have ever been produced of it, other than the report of Ron Wyatt. But he was also one who did uh, some research with regards to uh, uh, what he believes are the very chariot wheels and axles of Pharaoh's um, invading army that were buried in the sea for along this peninsula, underwater peninsula, there are various uh, uh, elements of wreckage which he purports to be evidence of uh, the uh, remaining uh, evidence of the Egyptians there. Now, I must tell you that there is significant questions with regards to the veracity of this and the accuracy of this. Uh, there is lots, as the rest of the sea is so deep. This is a very popular um, and has been since ancient times a, uh, um, a 
place where uh, ancient vessels went back and forth. There is a lot of uh, evidence of lots of wreckage there from uh, uh, thousands of years of maritime use of this area. And so that's a bit unconclusive, but it is provocative. Certainly the land bridge makes it very provocative. Let's look at the fourth alternative, the alternative there of the Straits of Tehran. Now, when you examine the western shore of the uh, Sinai Peninsula, you'll see that there is a large uh, sandy area that goes clear up unto the area of the land of Goshen. It would have been easy to travel south along this line, but notice the idea there is that as they traveled down, they then came to a place where they no longer could continue walking along the sea. The idea is that there would be a place of the crossing there at the Straits of Tehran. Now again, remember these four key descriptions. They turned from Ethan, meaning a turn in the wilderness. They camped by Pihehiroth, the mouth of the channel. They were between Migdal and the sea, meaning the tower or fortress, the mountains that were there, opposite Baal Ziphon, meaning the god of the north. Now, as we look at this area, there are some, again, very interesting features concerning this. First of all, as you go to this particular area at the tip of the Sinai Peninsula, it's a very popular uh, place for scuba diving because there is so much under the surface there. And you'll notice opposite the main land mass, there are a number of very large islands. And there is the belief that as you stand, or is the practice that as you stand uh, on the Sinai Peninsula and you look eastward and you look at these islands, for ancient mariners, as they would sail from the safety of being able to see land, the last bit of land they would see would be this island that is in the middle of this uh, opening of the Gulf of Aqaba. And there is some belief by archaeologists that this was being referred to as the God of the unknown, that as they went past this last piece of land, now sailing into the main body of the Red Sea, they would commit themselves to the God of the unknown. And there would be sacrifices that would actually be uh, uh, partaken of there. But another thing that's interesting about this particular place is there is also an underwater land bridge that goes from this uh, place at the tip of Mount Sinai to the beginning of Saudi Arabia. In fact, when you travel there today at low tide, you will see uh, the residual of it. There are, there's a coral reef there, which is a favorite spot for divers. And uh, this um, land bridge is a little uh, under 100 feet under the water. And of course, the coral uh, has, uh, has grown up to the point to where it's now almost at sea level. And there's some very interesting photographs. You ever want to uh, just Google the, uh, uh, the, the, and look at images from the Straits of Tehran. You can see uh, many of these people who love to scuba dive and snorkel around this area. Uh, at, they can go out into the middle of the Straits of Tehran and at low tide, they can actually stand uh, in waist-high water, and they're on uh, the firm ground that is there as a result of the coral reef. So we have there a, two options within this very deep portion of water, the Gulf of Aqaba, where the children of Israel could have crossed over, God leaving the residual of either one of these places, a land bridge. The pathway in the sea, we are told, Exodus chapter 15, verse 8. And with the blast of your nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The flood stood upright like a heap. The depths congealed in the heart of the sea. The dividing of the Red Sea is something that is presented often in Scripture in Psalm 66, 74, 77, 104, 106, Nehemiah 9. It's, it's recounted in 
an amazing number of places.